All right, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to be walking you through how to write a thematic analysis. You've had your diagnostic, which was measuring your ability to do this on your own. Now, I want to make sure that you have some background information so that you can do it yourself um, better next time. <laughs> Okay, so if you look over uh, the document that I'm sharing with you right now, what you can see is that I have gone over the Bass, the River, and Sheila Mant, which is the one that I used as my example last time. And what I have here is similar to the form that I had you fill out for the diagnostic, where I've chosen a theme and then I put a lot of evidence. You can see that I've been super extra about how much evidence I've used. So like, over here, you had the requirement of doing, you know, like a single theme, which is exactly what I did, and then a few pieces of evidence to back that up. And four wasn't like the max or the minimum, but it was a good starting point for this diagnostic. So what I have here is all of the evidence that I found to support the theme that I chose for the Bass, the River, and Sheila Mant. So the idea here was uh, the theme is don't hide who you are or what you love to get someone to like you. And throughout the story, you can see I found a whole bunch of information uh, regarding that particular theme and backing it up. And so right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually walk through writing this paper and you're going to get to watch the writing process because honestly, I really don't think it's fair to give you guys an essay without me having to do something like that too. And, you know, also it's good for you to see that adults also struggle with the writing process. You know, we have just as many blocks when we're trying to put together our ideas. So I'm going to get started. I know that I'm talking about the story and I know that I'm talking about the theme uh, that I chose from up top. So I'm just going to start typing and I might edit through. I might speed this up a little bit, but anytime that I have like issues or need to think through a word choice or whatever, you're going to get to like go on that journey with me. So I'll try to keep this short and I'm probably not going to write the whole essay, but you know, let's go along for it. So, okay. In the Bass River and Sheila Mance. Ooh, I'm already stuck because I don't know the author's name off the top of my head. So I'm going to just Google that really quick. And what do I see? I see W.D. Wetherell is the name. So let's go back. W.D. Wetherell. Uh tells the story of a young man who loves fishing and is also very interested in his neighbor, Sheila Mance. And you can see as I'm typing, like you can kind of see what I'm putting there so you can watch the process, but I'm typing over here so that I can like have two different spaces to go back and forth with. Um, throughout the story, the narrator desperately tries to get Sheila's attention and win her affection. Unfortunately, when he does manage to get some time alone with her, I should probably rephrase that at some point because that's a messy sentence. Um, she makes him choose between his love of fishing and her. Uh, I want to include my theme at this point. I'm just going to drag and drop my theme so that I have it, but I'm obviously not there just yet. So there's my theme. Uh, 
the story clearly illustrates the I don't want to say the theme of because that feels very like I'm just too on the nose. Story. Hmm. Maybe I'll just rephrase the theme a little bit. Uh, clearly argues you shouldn't hide who you are or what you love to get someone to like you. Boom. Okay, get rid of that extra T. Um, Now, I need to include at some point, like, the points that I'm going to make, but I don't know that yet. So we're going to consider this introduction, like, not finished. It started, but it's not finished. So moving up, um, I should probably start in the beginning. Narrator, oh, I want to say something like tells the reader about his life and his interests. Um, I hate the word tells when I want the narrator. Shows readers where he spent a very important summer learning a hard lesson while he does mention his love of fishing early on No, I've got the perfect quote for this. Okay. So my very first quote that I chose from my evidence I'm going to use here. Well, he does mention his love of fishing early on. That love is quickly eclipsed by his infatuation with Sheila Mant. And I'm going to put a colon there because what I'm about to say is just going to further illustrate what I just said, and that's a good use for a colon. So let's pop that quote. You'll notice a couple of things here. So I did, I already had quotation marks around it when I made my like list of evidence. I just decided to format it all already because I knew it'd be a little bit simpler. Oh, we're getting to the bottom of the screen already. Um, so that helped me out in the long run because I'm just going to be dragging and dropping quotes now because they're already set up and ready to go into the actual essay. Um, and I also included my in-text citation. So this is the only story I'll be talking about in this particular essay. But here I have the author's last name and the page number of the story that I found this quote on. So this was like probably the first sentence of the essay or the short story anyway. Um, but it does communicate what I just said. So he loves fishing um, and he finds largemouth bass lovely, which I'm assuming is like figurative language because largemouth bass look gross. But then he said the only thing lovelier to him than largemouth bass was Sheila Mant. So that really like expresses that we're going to have that conflict. This sets up the narrator's internal conflict very early. And then let's see, what's my next piece of evidence that happens? Because now I'm thinking if I'm starting with the very first line, I should probably just talk about the story chronologically and we'll see how many paragraphs I get out of that. Um, this seems to be a paragraph about the conflict between his love of fishing and his infatuation. At this point, however, the story takes a break from the beauties of bass and focuses solely on Sheila. Yeah, that's a good first paragraph. I'm going to jump to the next one because I think this is where I'm going to 
illustrate like how obsessive he gets with her. One second. Okay. Um, so in starting the next paragraph, uh, it may actually be fair. This is kind of bad writing anyway, because it, it's weak. I should really just, yeah, no, I'm going to get rid of it now. I don't normally revise while I'm writing. This is a later process, but I know it's bad. So I'm just going to take it out. Um, Actually, uh, the narrator is, in fact, obsessed with her. And you can, like, I'm, I'm making a link between the previous paragraph and this one, and this sentence really sets me up for that transition. So I'm going to get my next quote ready. He tells the reader that. All right, now, because of the sentence that I've set up for myself here, I'm actually going to have to make a quick change. So since I say he tells the reader that, I can't have I, meaning the narrator, in this section. So I'm just going to change that. I'm going to say he um, would have given anything to be invited to one of their parties. He tries desperately, no, I already used the word desperately, didn't I? He tries anything he can think of to get Sheila's attention. <sighs> I'm falling less and less in love with that quote that I added, but I have a good paraphrase to start up, so I'm going to grab this. Um, I'm actually going to show you this paraphrase. So when I did my evidence... I pulled this really long quote because I knew that this was pretty useful, but it was too long. You know, like this would have been basically a paragraph in and of itself. So I shortened what I could in my own words, and then I included the part that I thought was most important. So you'll see my paraphrase right here, and that's what I'm about to drag and drop into my essay, and I'll read it. Ah, oh, I did myself a favor. See, the good thing is I knew how I wrote these quotes and paraphrases, so I was more prepared than I would have been otherwise to transition into them really easily. So you can see, after swimming laps by her house every day, she finally looked over once, so he began showing off his diving skills until she had left and the sun went down. It's a very, like, cringy part of the story and kind of embarrassing, but, you know, funny for us as the reader because these aren't real people. Um, okay, so I want to look at my next piece of evidence before I get started. Okay, and it looks like what I'm finding out later on in the story is that she's not actually that interested in him. So I'm going to wrap up this paragraph and transition into a new one that talks about more her perspective and some evidence that proves that she, you know, wasn't actually in it to begin with. So I need some analysis still in this paragraph. Um, clearly, the narrator was hoping Sheila would see his dives and fall instantly and madly in love with him. That is not how the story It's not that kind of story. Okay, and then that'll help me transition into this paragraph where I start talking about Sheila's disinterest. Now you notice that I didn't format this and like, here's what each of my body paragraphs are going to be about. I've got my evidence, I wanna make it fit. And I could have done a little bit more planning before I got into the writing process. And I might still move some things around. This is a rough draft. But for right now, what I'm doing is setting up what I have in the order that makes most sense to me. So, you know. Always open for changes as we go forward. This is not a permanent document. It can change whenever I want it to. <sighs> Sheila doesn't seem to have any feelings towards the narrator. Nope. Sheila is actually different 
to the narrator. When he ooh, when he attempts to or when he yeah no when he finally works up the nerve to ask her a date the interaction is awkward at best another colon another quote Sheila's seems much Sheila seems much more interested in tanning and talking to older guys. She does, however, agree to go see a concert with the narrator which gives him hope in the show. We'll go with that one. When he arrives at her house in his freshly waxed canoe, she immediately suggests they take a car instead. They agrees to ride in the canoe, but refuses to help paddle. Okay, I have a quote um, that would probably do the same job as this sentence, but I'm just going to give myself an in-text citation to say like, yes, I'm paraphrasing what happens or what happens in the story but I'm gonna keep going. You'll also notice that I'm using present tense. That's called the literary present tense. Even though the story was clearly written a long time ago, you still have to talk about the story like it's continuously happening because it's a story that exists in the present. So that's why I keep using uh, verbs that end in S. Okay, so. This should be a sign to the narrator that he is barking up the wrong tree. That's a cliche. I should probably change that later. But his blind optimism keeps him keeps his hopes alive or afloat. Is a float, maybe a float is too punny since they're like literally in a canoe. Oh, okay. Anyway, next paragraph. Okay, let's see here. I have a decent amount. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through what I plan to do with the rest of the essay and then jump to the conclusion because you've seen plenty of body paragraph up to this point. So um, the story goes that he keeps paddling. Um, he ends up in shallower water, so the bass starts fighting more. And eventually Sheila's going to figure out that there's a, a fish on this line, right? So he gets further and further and further the rod is kind of like moving around and making noise and drawing attention so as he gets to the point where it's like do or die either you reel this fish in with this girl on the boat who hates fishing or you cut the line and you guessed it he cuts the line they go to the concert he remembers hardly anything about it because he's so devastated about losing this bass and then Sheila ends up riding home with a different boy, which is her prerogative as a young lady. However, 
his lesson from all of this is clearly that he probably shouldn't have tried to hide the fishing just to impress somebody who wasn't that interested in him to begin with. So that's where my conclusion is going to go. Oh my goodness. You haven't gotten to see this paragraph. I'll give you a second to look this over because I'm clearly a fool. Uh, okay. So while you look that over, I'm going to get started on my conclusion paragraph. <sighs> The lesson that the narrator had to learn is one that most young people struggle with at some point in their lives. He seems to like the idea of Sheila much more than he likes the actual person. but he didn't learn that until he had already cut the line. The fish was there. Hooked and ready to be reeled in. but he bet on the wrong love or he bet on the, uh, he chose the losing bet. Chose the losing bet. I thought I read a quote that really sums this up. Narrator didn't yet know that you shouldn't Where's the theme? Where did I put the theme? It's in the introduction. If I just scroll up, I can find it. Didn't yet know that you shouldn't hide who you are or what you love to get someone to like you. But he reassures the reader that he dot dot dot. I'll get rid of that I because I don't need that I. Never made the same mistake again. Boom. Done. All right. So that's how to write a thematic analysis. That's one version. Oh, my goodness. And now you can actually see how I got to the end. But the idea here is that you will go through this process a couple of times throughout this semester and next semester. Um, thematic analyses are one way that I can gauge your understanding of a text. You'll notice that I was able to pull evidence from the entire story, not just like one section. And I went chronologically, but you could do it by point. So you could have one point of like, here, I'm going to prove that the narrator really liked fishing. Here, I'm going to prove that Sheila Mant didn't actually like the narrator in the first place. Here, I'm going to prove that the narrator was being super extra by trying to get her attention. And then slow, slowly show how he learned the lesson that way. One thing that I do want to point out as you're looking over this is like, I'm not even done, right? I've still got a couple of paragraphs to go here. This is certainly not a five paragraph essay, nor did it need to be. Um, I'm not expecting you guys to be able to turn out an essay this quickly. This is something I've been doing for a while. You can see my degree behind me. It's kind of the thing that I do, but it is something that we're going to get practice in and we're going to improve as the year goes on. So if you have any questions about this or anything else I've covered, then please reach out to me over Gmail or Hangouts and I hope you have a fantastic day.